Hey YouTubers, it's Buddy Platt. Today I'm trying a unique beer done by Samuel Adams. It's called uh, 13th Hour, and it's part of a special collection they've done of uh, barrel-aged beers. Uh, they went to Eastern Europe and got these specially designed barrels used for Italian brandies, and they brought them here to the States to produce a kind of unique line of beers and to age them in these uh, European oak barrels. Uh, this particular one is called 13th Hour and it's kind of a hybrid beer between a nice dark chocolatey kind of stout and a Belgian ale. Um, also another little uh, part about this barrel aged series is they use a unique uh, yeast blend they call um, Mother Funk or, Co or Cosmo Mother Funk or something like it, and it's a just a blend of Belgian yeast and uh, Champagne yeast and uh, anyway produces unique beers. So let's give this a try. Harder than I thought. There we go. All right. Appearance wise, we do have the uh, color of a stout, a nice khaki head. Um, the carbonation on this one's good. Let's give her a smell. All right, on the nose now, you pick up more of that Belgian ale. Um, you do, do get the sweet malts, but there's also that kind of uh, funkiness of a Belgian ale on the nose. So let's give her a try. All right, that's that's unique. Um, like so, that color and I'm picking up some of the chocolatey maltiness on the nose. You're kind of preparing yourself for a stout, but when you taste it, it's a lot fruitier uh, notes. Uh, even though it has a dark color, you're not picking up as much of the dark malts. Um, also, the carbonation, the effervescence of this beer is again something different than what you would see in a Typically lower carbonated stout. Um, yeah, on the taste, appearance-wise, I'm getting stout, but on the taste, I'm getting Belgian ale. Um, you would think, you know, with this beer, um, the dark colors, the barrel aging, uh, it's nine point. Oh, ABV that this would uh, you're thinking more of a wintertime beer darker beer but um, tasting this this is something I could drink on a, on a spring day um, yeah this is a this is a very drinkable beer you know kind of a back porch beer um, I do on the finish start to get a little bit of higher alcohol, not, you know, compared to the uh, couple of beers I've had lately, there have been 10.0, 12.0, the, the winter warmers, we call them. I wouldn't compare them to that, but uh, you do on the finish notice that this is a, a, a beer of increased alcohol. But uh, overall, that is a nice, unique blend of a beer. Like, so when you first get in there and you get your nose into it, you're like, all right, think it's out. But, um, this uh, comes off more working toward a, you know, kind of a funky farmhousey ale, or you could pick up the fruity esters on that one. So, overall, good beer. Oh, I want to talk to you today. I actually, a couple things, but the main topic today is I uh, had a conversation with a guest the other day that kind of got me to think about a bigger topic. He was telling me about how he used to own a bar. 
They had fun, all kinds of fun, and that he was telling me, that, man, you ought to open a bar. He seemed like a smart guy, and boy, you would love it, and I bet you'd be good at it and everything. And the thing is, I've thought about opening a bar for a long time, but I got to talk to him, and I finally asked him, well, you know, how long did you own the bar? And I finally asked him, well, how much money you make off your bar, you know, when, when you sold it? Oh, I, I didn't make anything, but boy, it was fun. And uh, got to talk to him. This is his second or third business. He was successful in other careers. And this ended up becoming more fun. And I told him that I'd worked for several individuals like him that were good guys, would let you have a couple of drinks after work, we'd have fun, they would come in have fun. But that it was their second or third business. It wasn't their primary business. And most of those guys that I've worked for um, never made a profit. They had fun. It didn't lose the money. Um, they would party with employees or this, that, and the other. They had to hang out for them and their friends. But they never really made a lot of money. And that's the deal with the bar business. If you're not serious about it, you're not going to make money. Uh, you, if you have enough money to where you can have a half million dollar fun house, then maybe a bar's for you. But if you're serious about getting opening a bar or whatever, I would seriously talk to people like this gentleman about their experience. And after they tell you some fun stories, when you ask them the bottom line, how much did you make? What was your sales? This, that, and the other. Did you have any lawsuits or whatever? There's a lot of legalities. There's a lot of issues. Um, to be honest, I've worked with a lot of shady bartenders in my time. Um, trust me, there's a lot of Inventory that goes out the door in a lot of these bars, uh, especially if you have food, then you have cooks to worry about, this, that, and the other. Uh, when you serve a lot of liquor, you have a lot of liabilities like fights and your local police and this, that, and the other. So I just got my mind to thinking the other day about the topic, and I don't want to discourage anybody. If that's your dream, that's great, but I want to advise everybody to kind of think about it more. Go talk to people that have ran bars and... Uh, Hopefully, they'll lead you to the right uh, path. Also, a quick note before we wrap up. Starting next week, I'm going to start a series. I'll probably take us through the rest of the year on the different beer styles. Each week, we'll visit a certain beer style. Let's go over the specifics of what makes it that style. And we'll try a different beer from that style. So, to kind of work you through, you know, what's a... California Common, or what's a Belgian Triple, or what's a, you know, Farmhouse Ale. All these different styles of beers. And uh, like I said, probably will get us through the rest of the year. So look forward to that. Uh, if, if you, you know, uh, can think of a certain style you want me to review or whatever, please feel free to let me know. Well, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please subscribe down below. Also, feel free to leave comments or questions or any concerns down in the comment section below, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.